Hello, everyone. This is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University, and this is the information design class. And uh, today we're just going to go over formatting uh, some graphs that came from Excel, Tableau, or R, uh, bring them into Illustrator and clean them up a little bit. Okay. So let's see. I I downloaded some of your um, some of your examples from uh, one point two, which were the uh, yeah just the straight graphs from the uh, from the programs, right? And um, let's see. I did I did notice that some of them. Um, were not editable. So I think we should make sure that when you save these from your programs, actually this looks okay, it's not pixelated. Um, some of them for some reason were pixelated. Let's see if this is, no, that looks good too. Well, actually no, yeah, you see there. So something is not good here because we want to be able to edit them, right? Um, so when you export, don't export to uh, picked or anything like that. Um, another giveaway is that if I open that, um, let's see, in Illustrator, the same file. Oops, sorry, I was trying not to have names show up, but um, okay, I think it's safe enough. Um, and I go into view let's see it's outline right see everything disappears so that's not good because i can't do much here okay all right so let's see uh, quit this then save so what i did was i just found some that were editable and now i'm just going to open those um, and see what they look like okay example, pixel examples, vector examples, illustrator, PDF. Okay, I'm just gonna open them all up in illustrator. I don't know if, yeah, they're opening up in the right screen. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna do too, do fancy stuff and just trying to give you a few basic um, tips, I guess. Um, so why don't we start? Okay, um, this message about the fonts, um, yeah, Calibri, I guess I have it somewhere, but I'm just gonna say find fonts and I'm just gonna make it Helvetica, okay? Um, real easy, um, I'm not sure which one is not registering, but um, so let me just go over my list here. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty simple one because there's just one line, right? Um, although the first thing probably we would wanna do, oh, notice how Let's see, if I do this and I do select all, you can see that there's a lot of, everything is like one little bit. So this is not so great and it can be a real pain to edit, especially if you're trying to standardize the fonts. So I'm not sure how um, to get around this, but I have a little trick for the, for the bottom if, you're, um, if your labels are not already at 45 degrees. Um, here, I would just simply say, okay, this label is a little, not, not so great, right? This title. So just get rid of that. And then we can say, um, um, breast cancer rate per 100,000 in the US from 1975 to 2017, okay? Um, 
So one thing I don't like is this box. We can get rid of that, okay? That's much better. Now it is true that this graph is a little bit light, I guess. So sometimes it helps to have maybe a background. In general, I'm not for backgrounds. So here, probably what I would do is, uh, let's see, we could do this. We could put a, a field there of maybe, um, by the way, Actually, make your file um, CMYK, okay? So let's see, document color mode. Okay, it's already in CMYK, good. Um, even though, of course, if you were to, you know, probably save it and open it up in some kind of browser, it would be all RGB. But for right now, let's do CMYK. So let's make this... Um, I don't know, 10% um, gray. I'm gonna send it to back. And there's something else there that's covering it up. So I wonder what that is. There you go, there was something else. So one good way to clean up your graph is to, again, go into outline. I think it used to be called preview. By the way, I should tell you that um, I just got a new computer and I got all new programs. And therefore, I'm learning like what everything is. I had not created in many years. Too embarrassed to sell many. So, um, so don't laugh if I'm like looking for stuff and I can't find it. Okay. Anyway, you can see there's some junk here, right? I'm not exactly sure what it is. Maybe not anymore. Maybe this is just now my box. But let's see. Um, no, that was, yeah, that was my box. So anyway, it's it's not great to have crap, right? So you should try to simple. Now, the other thing I wanna do now is definitely since I put that gray, gray background, oh, this is nice, these are all grouped. Um, I'll just make those lines white instead of whatever they are, which is gray, right? And, and I think they're actually a little thick. So somewhere here's the stroke. It's a point something. I'm gonna go maybe half a point for now. Okay. So there you go. We didn't do much, but it's already pretty good, right? Um, one thing that will happen often is that your your label on the left will be um, sideways because whatever that's what the program does. Uh, you definitely do not want that. And um, uh, so if this is like that, oops, right? You definitely do not want to do that, okay? Meaning you have to fix it. So oftentimes, um, though, that's a problem, right? Because it's too big, right? So let's say this was actually the title. Sometimes the title is often whatever the graph is on the left side, meaning on the Y, because that's the data often. Um, so let's assume that this had a title and the label was here. So what you can do, even if it's such a long one, I think you should definitely maybe shorten it, but even if you cannot shorten it, what you can do is um, just put it on top here, do something so that, let's see, breast cancer rate, Okay, now, once you have a label here that says, you know, whatever years, I mean, it's obvious that there are years this here, but um, ugh, I hate that this puts a title. Okay, right? So one would think, well, this label is right here, it's straight, right? Um, so it's not so great and it doesn't make much sense that the one on the left should be also straight, but in fact it does. So just get into the habit of making, it doesn't look so great now because it's big, but um, just, just if there's room, just put it there, okay? Um, I mean, another thing in this case is we could even do that, right? We could put, we could label the line, which is often better than having a separate legend. Um, but for right now, let's just keep it simple, okay? So, um, so I guess we could call this um, 
Oops, uh oh, my mouse is freezing up. Hold on. Uh, by the way, everyone, sorry if these videos end up being too long, but it's just impossible for me to, you know, shoot the whole thing and then edit in, you know, whatever program. That's just um, actually setting up this little thing took me about an hour figuring out the sound and everything else. So just be patient, just keep forward. Um, I like to say I'm not, I'm not the BBC, you know, the British, British Broadcasting Corporation. Um, okay, so. So again, clean it up a little bit like that. Now, what I definitely don't like is um, these things, you know, vertical here as well, okay? So here we have already some difficulty in that this type is really a mess because every single letter has got like, uh, has got its own little thing. And actually, in fact, I was looking at the layers here and it looks like there's one layer for every bit of type, which is just insane. Um, so we could try to fix this in the program. And you saw in Excel that already sometimes you put it in, but sometimes it didn't. Um, let me just show you one real neat trick that um, you have to be careful when you do it because things might get mixed up, but um, which is doing type at an angle in Illustrator, but controlling the spacing in a very simple way. Like if I wanted to change this, for example, change the spacing, it would be, you know, I would have to, yeah, use the alignment and whatever, distribute the spaces and whatnot, right? Um, so instead, let me just show you one quick way. I hope this is gonna work. So what I'm gonna do actually, I'm gonna, and you have to again, be careful. So I'm gonna try to grab that type, whatever that text is. It could be the states, right? It could be all the states. So now I'm going to go to my um, data set and just grab the, um, you know, just, just that column from the uh, CSV file. Okay, let's see if I find it. Um, of course, no, I have to go through all my folders. Just be patient. And I'm gonna open it now in Excel because it's easier to see. So this is the one that has all the years. Well, I'll open both um, and I'll do an example with both. Excel. By the way, everyone get Excel, it's free. I, re I found out for, for San Francisco State. So don't use Google Sheets. Number one, I don't know what's what's in them, right? Meaning they could do, why is this not opening? Oops. Um, so yeah, get it, there is a way, you know, there is a, okay, they're open, I just don't see them. Um, maybe Illustrator's covering up everything, let me see. Nope. Oh, I see they're already open, they're already in the dock. Um, yeah, so get Excel, all right? Because uh, in the first assignment, it happened that people used Excel and then it like took one of the tags. There was like this weird, you know, HTML tag in the, in the data names and that kind of threw off a bunch of stuff. Um, so yeah, by the way, here I'd made, I think I forgot to actually suggest this. I'd made myself um, a little chart of how to rename those, you know, really long names, but I, yeah, I, I can't remember. I think I never ended up not using it, but this could, this would be a good exercise to simplify your data set to just um, 
rename things. As long as you know what it is, then you know you can keep track of it. But um, so, all right. Well, let's just take the years for now, right? So what I want to do is I want to be able to move those labels and place them at forty-five. And there is one quick way to do it. Um, So with the ears, it's easy because you know they're like one after the other, right? Now, if I had the names, you really have to be careful, right? To make sure that that's the right sequence when you bring it into your Illustrator. Because basically Illustrator is like doing stuff by hand, right? Which is something normally I said never do because it's prone to errors. Um, but once you're like, if this is the last step, you know, it's, it could be useful. So let me just grab all these um, all these years and the way I'm going to do it now is copy it and then open um, BB edit in my case Let's see where it's going to go yeah, it's here um, okay and these are, I use all the time I use all the time the text only because I know it's clean it doesn't have any like junk and stuff um, and once again, if you don't have one, you should get one. And in VB Edit, I can view my invisibles by turning this on so I know there is a nice return. Here's the trick. You don't want, ideally, boxes of type, each one its own individual box. You want like running text, even for these labels, so that you can manipulate it easily. Um, so this is good that there's a return. There's a return, but it's still all together, right? So if I select all now, and I hope this works, because the last time, last few times I tried to demo this thing, it just wasn't working. Um, so let's see. Um, I'm going to quickly cover this up because I want to. Yeah, I don't want it to show. Oops. Okay, come on. None. Okay. I'm sure you're all very much faster than me on this stuff. Um, So yeah, what was I gonna do? Okay, I copied the text, now I'm gonna bring it in here, okay? And I guess I can bring it either in a box or just in a, in a new thing, right? Hmm, I'm not sure anymore. Let's try this. So the trick here is to, I think I might have to put it in a box, I can't remember. So now what I wanna do is I wanna put this at 45 degrees. Now, of course, and I hold shift and if nothing happens, why doesn't it? Okay, uh, well, I'm gonna guess that's 45 degrees. Okay, now again, you see, it's really nice that it is, um... wait, have there this many years? Oh, yes, okay, this is actually very good. Now, here you don't need it so much because they're ears, so you know, some, there's ears that are missing, right? Um, so now, of course, that's challenging for me. This is not the best example, but if you had states, that wouldn't be good, right? If you had columns, you definitely would want to have all the states. So um, again, this is a good way to, to do this, but let's, let's just go through the trick here and see if these are not gonna fit. So I'm gonna have to make them smaller. Um, but for now, well, actually not for now, let's just make them smaller because obviously we can tell there's just gonna be too big. So whatever this is, 12, I'm gonna make it maybe nine. Yeah. And it's definitely not 45. So I'm gonna try to somehow, okay, maybe that's 45. Uh, so we're gonna use wrap. So let's see, if I put a box here, if it doesn't work, we're gonna have to put the text in another box. Um, so I believe we can just take this in front. Let's 
sometimes when I lose things, I just turn it back into again outline mode, so you can see you can see what you're looking for. Um, so under let's see wrap where was it? Text wrap make okay it's under object text wrap make of course nothing happens so let's try here. I'm not going to edit this out, guys. Okay, it's, again, it's too much work. So let's see if I can do it. Um, no, I think I need to put the text into a. It's funny because I practiced this before and still. <laughs> okay, let's copy this. I'm going to put it in a box. There, here. And let's see if we can get this to wrap. Okay. That. So this works. It's nice. It just takes a while to. Okay, uh, close this. Okay, I'm back. Um, so yeah, what I had to do was actually put this box in front, the, um, the box that I was trying to wrap around um, and then it works and there you go. Okay, now it's still funny because it's flash left so we want to do it flush right so remember this is just the type with all the returns i turned the 45 degrees i put a box on top of it um and now by putting the um, alignment on the right we got this nice thing which i can control you might have to open things a little bit up but let's see Okay, now again, again, I'm used to the old illustrator here. So I'm having a little, I'm a little challenged opening these boxes, but you know what, I'm just going to do it a little bit the hacker hack way. So I'm going to, it doesn't matter, right, how I open it, um, as long as I get them all under there. Let's see if they all fit. Yeah, it's still too um, too big, right? So what I'll do is I'll select it all. I'll make it even smaller. Um, yeah, it's this is not very elegant, but it will work eventually. Let's just say seven point. Um, but also I need to change the. Uh, so maybe it's seven on. How about we make it six and seven? Yeah, it's way too small. Normally I wouldn't do this, but um, but now I notice that now that I have it, I can control the leading really well because um, let's say I want it a little bit closer, right? So what I can do now is change um, change my Leading and by leading we mean line spacing, right? So let's just say seven point one, maybe two. Um, ideally, of course, you want to do this kind of stuff in the program, right? So we don't have to do all the stuff I just did. But um, sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes it's Okay, 7.5, okay? So this avoids having to like take all these parts, trying to space them because they're all connected, right? Anyway, spent too much time on this, but I think it's a, it's a neat trick. Um, and if I had, you know, if I had the other one, 
that has the states. Um, well, why don't we do that actually when we get to the bar chart? Okay. So, um, okay, one other thing. Okay, I'm going to go down through my list and um, let's see, label lines directly. Okay, grid lines, possible light gray ground. Yes, with grid lines. Okay, we did that. Um, Yeah, so uh, what we could do is we could, if there were two lines, rather than having a legend, we could label the, we could label the line here, okay, at the end. Um, so maybe we'll do that with the other one. Um, but there is one thing that I want you to do, and I'm gonna be pretty, I don't know, strict, I guess is the right word about this, and that is don't use gray type, okay? I know Tableau by default does gray type, but it's bad. I mean, on the screen, I guess it's okay because you have less contrast, so it's maybe easier on the eyes, but for printing, it's terrible. Um, I'll go over this again, but um, because it makes everything broken up into little dots in order to get that gray. So we'll probably, and, and I know now it's a little bit of a pain, but let's see, let's see what these are. Um, yeah, it's CMYK, all right, but it's whatever, right? 63, 54, 54, 28. Oh, sorry, let me make my, apologize. I should have made this, um, my cursor, which you find in display in accessibility is bigger. Okay, yeah, there we go. So many things, that's why you need the production crew. Um, okay, so you can see these are like these values are just nuts. I mean, why do we need that? We should just do them 100% black, okay? Period. This, I think, it already is. That's great. And this already is. Yes, nice. Okay. Uh, much, much cleaner. And this one, see, for some reason, why did it do this? That's where things drive me nuts. Why did it make it whatever colors if I told it 10% gray earlier? Ah, sorry, frustration. Okay, looks the same, but I don't want all these colors. Um, all right. So let me just label this so that we don't. Um, I guess, I guess this would be US yearly average, I suppose. I'm not sure now if that's right, but um, anyway, the rate is 35 or whatever, right? Somewhere between 30 and 20 per 100,000. Um, okay, so I'm going to save this. Um, so what I want you to do for the assignment is actually take um, at least two types and at least one scatter plot. So it could be you know two bar charts and one scatter plot or one line, one bar into in the scatter plot or two lines and the scatter plot and put together a panel that tells a little bit of a story about what you find what you found about this cancer disparity. I mean, the main thing is the difference between white and black, right? That's what we're trying to show. Um, and now let me just save this. Uh, hope I can remember which one it is, yeah. And when you put them together, I want you to align them and make them coherent between each other, okay? So let's see again here, it's bugging me. So I'll just say Helvetica. Um, so yeah, here's an example. Okay, so let's just say I want to show this, which is the yearly, I mean, for the entire United States or for all those years, okay? Um, again, I don't like my labels now because the years are too small and the rates are maybe too big. So we'll, we'll get back to that, but... Um, Let's um, let's take now this other one. Let's say I want to now take my bar, take this bar chart and put it next to the line. So because it's really, 
it's the black rate, it's, it's high, um, but the y axis that's important and we want to, and this is a good example now, we're gonna see how to do that trick with the labels um, so that they're all fit, right? Um, so what I'll do is, um, I will cut and paste this. So I'm gonna check and see if it's there. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm, again, I'm going into uh, view and I'm going into outline, okay? Anyway, it's command Y on the Mac. I don't know on the PC, I guess control Y. Um, so I'm going to select this, if I can, if I may. Uh, sometimes it's hard to select things if things are all lumped together. So the first thing I do actually when I work in Illustrator um, is to, un yeah, sometimes it's not so great to ungroup things, but ungroup them, um, open up the clipping mask and all these things. So if, if I do select all and I go to object, uh, Clipping mask release. Okay, there you go. So now it allowed me to. Now it's going to allow me to actually edit individual items. You know, without having to go to the whatever this tool is called, the one that lets you select uh, single items. Um, so what what it did was basically PDF created this box around it. There was no box in the original, but now there was a box to to make it into a picture or into a window. Right. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, I'm gonna go back to this and let's see if I can now just grab. Yeah, that's good. So I'm gonna copy this and now let's assume this is my panel. Okay, let's assume this is my my submission, right? This is the this is the thing you're gonna submit. And I, I can see I lost for some reason my um my division, but that's that's okay. So I'm gonna paste that. Uh, I'm not really sure if these are grouped, so I'm gonna have to be careful a little bit because it could get all hard to control. Now, it's still grouped. Uh, no, it's ungrouped, but there's yet another clipping mask. So I could do a couple of things. I could try to get rid of just that, right? By selecting it with, yeah, okay. But now, those are the titles, the years. So, uh, okay. Object, I bet you it's another clipping mask. Yeah, so I'm just gonna get release again. And actually that's not so great, but you can see why. <laughs> um, the type is all outlined. So I'm not sure why this happened. Um, I have a, bad feeling that you didn't embed all the fonts or well, perhaps it's because I didn't have the font now when I brought it in and I said Helvetica and because I didn't have whatever this is, it just made it into lines. I'm not so sure. So make sure you embed all your fonts. Um, in this example now, because I'm gonna do the same trick, I'm not gonna care, but obviously you don't want to deal with type like this, right? This would be like impossible to really um, mess with. So actually, I'm going to regroup it so I don't, I'm just going to leave it alone, okay. I'll leave the, um, this is really in the way, isn't it? So let's see if we can. Yeah, still there. You can see there's all this junk from earlier. I should probably clean it up, but um, why don't we do that? This is good practice, okay? I know the video gets even longer, but I don't like that, right? I mean, yeah, you might never see it. On the other hand, if you save this as a PDF, when somebody opens it, it's possible that they'll see it like first the first layer and then the second layer 
that's going to be annoying. So I will, I will now try to clean this up by locking this part. Um, and then going into this view and just trying to select the all these numbers. Remember, these were the ones that we didn't like. So let's see if I did a good job. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. I am a little bit of a perfectionist, which it's not always a good thing, right? Sometimes you want to get things done, but um, and this, of course, is not the breast cancer rate anymore, right? This is if it has to be anything at all, it would be years, right? Which is silly as a label, but for now, let's just keep, just keep it there. Um, okay, so what I want to do now is I want to um, I want to make sure my axes are the same. What's called synchronize the axis in Tableau, um, and that means that I want to put the top, in this case, 35, which is also the limit here, um, align it with the 40, with the 35 of the, uh, of this side. And with bar charts, it's, it's, I mean, again, you could do this in the program, which would simplify your life later, but let's say I forgot, okay, whatever. When you bring them into whatever your, your layout, you, um, if they appear at different spots, it's actually, maybe okay, but not so okay. Yeah, they should really be the same unless they're like really different sizes, the whole graph. So let me just, um, yeah, that's some other junk. So let's get rid of that, whatever that is. Um, so there's lots of parts that are there, but this could be from before, right? This could be from my layout. Uh, now, now, okay, that, I'm going to lock that for a moment. And um, I'm going to get rid of this for now. And just so I don't forget, I'll just quickly type, you know, black, right? For, uh, it was 2017, right? Um, Cancer. Female population. Um, that's cancer. So you have to. Yeah, you have to make sure everything is like understandable, right? So black cancer doesn't say much, breast cancer doesn't, so let's just say rate. Um, in fact, let's just say mortality, right? Breast cancer mortality rate per 100K. Okay, black female population, okay. So, and, and now I'm not gonna deal with the label here on the, on the Y, right? Because uh, truly this is, I mean, the title is already the title of the axis, right? Um, so, okay, I have a long list for, for um, um, let me just make sure that we're going, yes. So um, I'm gonna go through the list of what we can do um, to make this graph better. Um, number one, you don't wanna use weird colors, right? Okay, blue is okay. Now it works here because we have the blue line on the left. Um, although in this case, it's just applying to black and not to everybody, but um, perhaps it's a little too dark. So we could change that. Um, so a couple of things that we can do right away is, oh, the first thing we want to do is actually make the graph. Uh, bars are good because you can stretch them without distorting the data, right? As long as you do them all at, all at once. With the scatter plot, it's not so easy. 
Um, so, but let's just see if we can grab everything and stretch it to the right spot, okay? So the guys helped me here. Um, so I'm going to grab everything that includes the 35, right? I'm going to get rid of 40 because it's, it's not... Um, So and now let's see if I can grab everything there. I'm just going to group it. Let's see. It's the other one. what happens when you change programs. Um, let's just use the, the scale. Ah, I knew this was gonna be embarrassing. Transform scale, what the heck are you? Okay, transform scale under object. Okay, object transform scale. Um, able to do it. Okay, well, you guys are better than me at this. I can't figure out now how to actually scale it by pulling the handle. So, so I am gonna use the, and I'm just gonna guess. Okay, now you all can start betting how many takes it's gonna take me to um, to get this to be in the right dimension. So I'm gonna guess it's 150%. Uh, and actually only, for now, only vertical, right? So non-uniform. We want 100% horizontal. Okay, scale strokes and effects. No. Okay. Let's see how good I was. Ah, close, but not quite. So now notice that my type, of course, got messed up. So actually, I'm not going to touch that. That's okay, I'm gonna grab it from the other graph. So let's see, let's do this again. So it was a little bit more. Transform, scale, 155. Yeah, almost. Okay. Scale, scale. So now I'm going to say 99%. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, so that now makes sense, right? So even though they're not overlapped, I can already tell something, right? I can already gather something from these two charts. One is the general, well, actually not that much because one is the all the years and this is just one year, right? But at least we can say for what, you know, for what states, because this is 2017, um, for what states, for blacks, you know, is, um, it's near, you know, it's basically like the average and you can see it's very few, only three or four states out of those 34. So it means that everybody else is, is still much higher than the average, right? Um, so anyway, let's see if I can get rid of this. Um, 
bring these over. But um, now on the graph, because it's already pretty solid, we don't want the background in general, right? Um, and the uh, distance between these graphs is pretty nice. I don't like it when the distance is exactly like the bar because it creates a really checkerboard effect and kind of vibrates, um, but it vibrates also because it's too dark. So maybe we can do something where we quickly make these bars less blue, right? That's nice, they're all grouped. So, you know, here, I guess it's okay to just deal with, um, you know, whatever the colors are. All right, let's just say that's good. So here's a trick in terms of your grid lines. They're, you know, they're usually, usually they're kind of too busy. Um, so there's one nice trick, which is to put them on top but make them white. And I'll show you what happens if you do that. Uh, there's a little extra thing here, I'm not sure. So if we can get rid of it, okay. Uh, this we don't need because it's the last one. Make sure when you delete something, you delete also the bottom. So what I'll do now is grab these um, lines. And what did we use before? And actually only this, not the bottom one. And here's a little junk. Um, here's the stroke. Again, I'm gonna make them 0.5. By the way, there's no proof of what it's gonna look like unless you print it, right? If it's going to print. And for the assignment, I'm actually gonna make a, like a control bar of five or six inches. I'm gonna ask you to put it in. So then I'm gonna ask you, okay, now zoom in and with a ruler, you know, like with a real ruler measure, and that's the true actual size. Because if I do actual size here now, it's not at all, you know, whatever it is it's supposed to be because the screen is, has got so much resolution and whatnot, okay? So um, what I'll do now is I'll, I'll bring this to the front, the lines. Um, bring them to front. So now this should be on top. Oops, what did I do? Oh, I made them way too thick. Oh, I made them five points instead of 0.5, okay. Um, okay, I didn't succeed in putting them to the front. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna X this. I'm gonna get rid of those dots. And now I'm gonna select all and I'm gonna paste in front because I really want them in front and they are in front. And now what I'll do, I'll make them white. Um, okay, I guess I could do it there, but. And what's nice about that is that the net result is that you look like you just put little tick marks in the bars, right? Now, sometimes this is too much because there's like too many lines. So what I would do probably here is actually get rid maybe of the ones every 15. Oh, looks like there's two of them in each. And, you know, we can leave, I mean, I know it looks a little funny without, with, the, with the number here, but not the line, but you can play around with this, okay? I still like it because it doesn't, it makes it less busy in terms of those, of those lines. Um, and, uh, okay, so that's it. Let's see, uh, no saturated colors. Yeah, don't use colors unless there's some meaning to them specific. So just use a normal color. Um, no gradients, no borders, um, no borders around the graph, um, all type 100% black, uh, set doc to CMYK, Oh, must be sorted, of course, this is good. Some of you, I saw that were not sorted. Uh, although of course the clustered bar with the bars next to each other, you can only sort one, right? The other went wherever. 
Um, so, okay, what else? Um, yeah, synchronize the axes so they're the same height if they're next to each other. We saw the labels and no vertical labels, no sideway labels, okay? So that would apply to the labels at the bottom too, right? Um, and what I'm doing now, it's not the final thing, right? This is just for an next assignment to get you into the mode of like, okay, make sure these graphs are not just like what comes out of the program, which could be kind of not so great. Um, so I have to release whatever I'd locked before. And now just because, oops, just because I wanna make sure when I cut and paste, um, I'm gonna leave it here just as a reference, okay? Because if I mess up, then I'm gonna be lost, right? So um, now I'm going to grab, and you know, you could do a quick spot check and say, oh, okay, starts with Minnesota because let's see, is my ends with Wisconsin? Yeah, so you see my data set is not, it's not aligning now with this, right? So I think it was, the black rate. So I'm going to make sure for, before I do anything that I sort my graph by my data set by black rate, right? And I do that by selecting it, going to data in Excel, sort. It immediately brings these up, which is important. Make sure you say expand the selection. Otherwise, you'll just sort that one column and everything else will stay frozen and everything will be scrambled. Um, and here you just tell it, okay, I want to sort it by black rate. There you go. And I want largest to smallest. Okay, so that now, here's also very another very important thing. What, okay, I think I did it right, but what if I did it wrong? How would you know, right? Um, so the thing to do is to do um, a quick, Oops, a quick spot check. And that means, come on, I have two screens here, I have to. Um, so that means that, okay, the first one is Mississippi here, right? And where's black? Wait, no, sorry, this is the wrong one. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, two screens is weird. Okay. So I quickly can check, oh, Mississippi. Yeah, 34.6, that looks right. It's almost 35 there, if you can see it. And then down below, my last one is, well, it's Minnesota. I remember here, I don't see it because, you know, this wasn't including everything. In fact, it was skipping looks like every two. It went from Kentucky to Connecticut to Wisconsin, Kentucky. Connecticut to Wisconsin. So every other, yeah, it skipped every other. So anyway, Wisconsin is 17 and a half. And that looks pretty good, right? Because it's right there. So always, you know, be careful. Um, so I'm going to grab now this. Oh, by the way, for the assignment, get rid of District of Columbia because it's always an outlier because it's not really a state. So their numbers are always a little bit skewed. Um, but for now, we're leaving it. I'll, I'll have the assignment where I'll have all these other things. So I'm going to copy this, go to my text editor so I can strip it of any junk that might be there. Okay, which is here. Paste it. And it's nice and clean. And now I'm going to copy it all. And I'm gonna do the same thing we did before and hopefully this time will be less painful. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, I can't remember, but let's just do it. Let's just put it in a box. I think that's safer than just having it as a... Okay, nice. So now it's actually already, you remember that I was doing um, right alignment, which is what I want. So 
Well, so this something is working. So I want to make sure I have them all. Yeah, yeah, Wisconsin. Okay. All right. So that's good. So now I'm going to flip this 45 degrees and let's see if I can. Oh, I guess I can do it like this. 45. Uh, I'm not sure which way it's going to go. Uh, do it, do it, do it. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I don't want that. It just, it just turned the box, but no, I don't want to do that. Let me just use the more traditional way, which is this. Okay, guys, sorry. I don't want to. Ay, ay, ay. Well, perhaps we have to do it in a in a line after all. Right? What do you guys think? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, mind you, I know that in Excel, I've already seen it in some of your assignments in the earlier assignment that you know it's already doing this. So obviously. You wouldn't have to do it if it showed you all the names, right? Which means you have to really stretch it out to make sure it's including them all. Um, so let's see, put a box on top. I already forgot what I did before to get it. Um, Oh yeah, I had to put it on top. I think it already is. So let's just try to wrap this box, object, text wrap, make, nope. Maybe I have to text, object, text wrap, make, okay. Arrange, bring to front. Frustrating, is it? Okay. Um, okay, let's start it over again. Okay, sorry about that. Um, it turns out that yeah, if you have to put it in a in a box. So I just did. I just copied and pasted into into another box. Let's do it again. Um, and then when I did that, also it was easier to uh, rotate it. Um, I don't know why I had trouble earlier, but go figure. Um, so once I did that, I put it there on top. And now I'm gonna, and I just practiced this by the way, while I post the video and it works. So I hope it works now. It's uh, all right. So now I'm selecting that and I'm selecting this and I'm telling it to wrap. So object, uh, click, ba, 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 text wrap, make, and it does. Okay, good. All right, so yeah, and this of course should be no, no fill. So that we don't, oops. Oh, sorry. I had to select it, I had to deselect that. Right. 
Okay, great. So now the only thing, oops, sorry about that. We need to, the only thing we need to do is make sure that this is big, right? So that it gets, and. Okay, come on. Yeah, we have to enlarge it quite large so that we can get it to. There we go. So it takes a little, a little while to, um, once you get it aligned, It will be um, it will be easy to then space it because we can just change the. Um, okay, it's not the right one. Okay, I'm gonna get there. Uh, just a moment. So I'm not um, I'm not crazy about this gray thing there, although it's good to have a baseline, right? Something to sit on. So I'm just gonna make it black. Um, oops, not that, just that. So, all right, and maybe it's a little thick too. So we'll just make it five, oops. And maybe we want to be really fancy and we can just even do that. And we don't need zero, right? I mean, here's about zero. Uh, many lines here. Um, so let's finish this up with the, uh, and then we should be good for this particular graph. Um, Okay. Um, I realize I haven't saved yet, so let me just make sure I save this. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so again, now it'll be really easy to, um, to adjust the spacing because it's all one big, one big block of text, right? So I can just simply go into the uh, into the line spacing here under character. Um, I'm not sure what that is now, but let's just say, oh, nice, it tells me. Okay, interactive, fancy. Um, okay, was it Minnesota the last one? I think it was, right? So nine. It's not quite. Just move it. By the way, there's different questions about where it should be pointing. I like it to be pointing to like maybe the corner. Um, also, let's see. Yeah, right now I want to go up. So it's a little short, right? Right here, Minnesota is a little short. So I'm going to make it. A little bit more, 9.1 perhaps. There you go, nice. Um, and once again, you could have done that with all the separate boxes, you know, spacing them, but this is actually cleaner and more precise and less prone to error. So, um, so I still want to have the, let's see, where is the mask is? I mean, the wrap, is that it? Yeah. 
So I want to I wanted to have them a little bit closer still. Okay, now that looks good, right? Maybe too much now. Um, and I prefer reading left to right when it's at an angle. Well, it's always left to right, but reading from the bottom up towards the top on the right rather than reading, um, you know, from the from the left left top to right bottom. I think this is this reads better. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the video for a moment so I can get. Got my thoughts together. Okay, so now, yeah, quick check. Okay, this starts with Mississippi, ends with, okay, ends with Minnesota, but pretty good. So now I can get rid of that. Okay, great. So I got two down. Um, so next I'm going to do a scatter plot, but I'm going to pause the video for a second. All right, I'm back. And yeah, I'm sorry, this video will be really long, but um, so I'm just going to now do the, uh, the scatter plot, and I'm going to look at a couple that um, I know some of you did the um, the Tableau, and then also the R. Uh, some of you actually forgot to put the labels um, in the uh, the state labels in the uh, in the R graphs. Um, so what I'll do is I'll first look at at Tableau, but I'm not going to actually edit Tableau. Um, Tableau is in fact already pretty good, right? Right off the right off the track or right off the shelf. Um, the trouble is like, I don't have all the names and I kind of want, and of course, you know, again, this is static it's print. If it were interactive, you could go over it and you would see it. But um, so, but for now, let's forget about that. Okay, we, we really, if possible, we should have all the names. So what I'm doing in this little exercise is really like make it you know, perfect, like, okay, we're gonna have everything. I know sometimes it's not possible if there's a thousand dots, obviously. Um, so for the assignment, yeah, make sure you delete District of Columbia so that the graph can expand a little more and you create a little more room here, okay? Um, although it is interesting to show that, yeah, because it is perfectly um, square, if you were to draw even by hand a, uh, uh, let's see, uh, what it, what might be called, you know, a trend line, um, right? If I do a forty-five degree line, that tells us immediately that. Um, so that what that line represents is the uh, relationship between black and white, right? Black on the left, right on the white on the Right, well, not really. Actually, these are a bunch of whites too, but um, it's it's showing the ratio between the two, okay? So if the ratio is always one to one, in other words, if there was no disparity, all the states would be aligning here along this line, right? Because as you go up, well, actually not quite, let me fix it. It's not quite, that's right. The person actually did mention that they did it a little bit wider. So, but if I go here, right? So even though it's not a 45 degree, actually not even there. Let me get this right like that. Yeah, like that. Okay, so if this was a square, that would be a perfect 45 because it's not square. But if I draw a line this way, in other words, I hit the diagonal and I hit the corner so that at every point it's the same rate. So 22, right? 22 for black. 22 for white. So Kentucky happens to be almost, yeah, you know, basically the same rate. It's whatever it is, maybe 21. Um, and then Washington state is actually better for blacks than for whites. So only three states, the rate is higher for, for whites than it is for black. Um, but what happens is it got, it does get all bunched up. So, you know, it, you could expand the graph and it would look more distributed. But the main point to remember is that it is, this is the true picture, right? This is the true bad picture of this disparity. Um, anyway, my point here is that actually 
Um, and by the way, in Tableau, you can do other things like, you know, put an average line. I don't know where the average is now. You know, maybe it's somewhere there, but oops. Um, you know, might be there showing, okay, these are below the average, uh, those are above the average, but I can't remember now. Um, anyway, uh, my point here is though that I, there's a bunch of stuff that I don't like. The fact that I don't have all the names really bugs me because, because for example, is New Jersey this guy on the left or is this guy on the right? I have no idea. Um, and what's in between there? And is California this dot or is California that dot, right? So how would you know? You would have to go back into blow, you know, go over it, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why R, even though as crude as it seems at first, and by the way, um, there's actually a package. Um, yeah, they're called packages, which you can import in R. It's called ggplot, ggplot. I think the G stands for graphics. And it does have a lot of nice features that make you do graphs in R already pretty nice. Um, so you could install that. So again, you know, I look at this, I'm like, okay, uh, it's Delaware. Okay, Virginia. Okay, good. But what about here? Which one is missing? Probably this one. Um, so I'm not happy about that. And also I'm not happy about the gray type. Let's just for kicks check what type this is. Okay. Low red nips and whatever it means. I should know because I'm Italian, but I should know Latin. Oh gosh, okay. Yeah, that's not fun, is it? Okay. Uh, okay, good. At least that one is 100%. Looks really crappy. Look at this type. Oh my gosh. Um, whatever is happening there, I have no idea, but it's no good, right? It's no good at all. <laughs> um, Anyway, it's 100% K, right? Black, which, uh, by the way, it's K because it stands for key, which means the detail in a photograph, you know, in a printed photograph, which stands for it's the black, it brings out the detail. Um, so I don't know what's going on there, but I don't like it, but I certainly do not like uh, this type. Okay, this type is 60% gray. No good, I don't like it. Um, this is 80% gray, even bad at worst, because it's like, why don't you just make it black? Um, now the lines, I can understand. What are these, are they actually lines? Or oh, there's something else, they look like boxes now. Um, the lines I can kind of understand, right? Um, but um, yeah. In another video, I'll show you how what happens in print when you have gray, everything gets broken up into dots and it can be a mess. So I'm not going to touch that now. Um, although I could do the things we did before where I made these lines white and I put a background that is gray. I'm going to do it in the other one, which is harder, meaning the other one has more work that I need to do. Um, so let me grab that. So it wasn't this one. Um, yeah, this would be a case with, where definitely I don't like these like vertical labels, right? They're just like, I don't know, they don't look right. Um, so yes. Yeah, don't forget to sort if it's a single. And if you sort here, here it's sorted by the white. Um, and I suppose because, you know, the white, the black is the more critical. Maybe I would have sorted by the black, but it doesn't matter. But you can see how one is sorted, right? The white from high to low, which is the blue bars. And the others, of course, cannot be sorted because they have to kind of follow it, right? The this, this rate for the two have to follow the state. So it can be sorted both. It has to be sorted. You can only sort one and the other is just whatever. Um, okay, so that's not the one. That's not the one. Yeah, this one. And actually, I'd already, let's see if I can go back. Yeah. Okay, I forget. maybe this is what. So yeah, this is not great looking, right? I understand, but at least it has all the names. So that's nice. Um, 
So why don't I try not to clean this up? What I did was I actually copied this. Well, actually, let me do it again. For the benefit of the video. <clears throat> Copy this and paste it here. So this is our graph earlier, right? And um, we'll deal later about like, how, how can I match these scales, et cetera. So for now, what I want to do is, is um, clean this up. Um, so because I want to be able to select things, I'm going to lock everything else. And here I just hit the same thing I did earlier. Um, if you have any junk, just, just, just lock it. Um, Okay, so now if I select everything in this, um, that's good because I want to work just with this. Okay. And right now, I think you see it's already kind of separated, but just to be sure, again, what I do is I select all and then I say object, clipping mask, release. You see, there is something that's still kind of bunched together, right? So I'm gonna release that and something happened there. It allowed me to see and edit some parts. And I always like to go to Y because it shows me everything. This is from the one before, but, um, but it doesn't affect me because it's locked, right? So, but you can see when I go to Y, there's like extra boxes that I don't need. So I'm just gonna get rid of those, right? And I'm actually going to get rid of this box too because um, the border of it is sort of random. It's just a little bit more beyond the extra, I mean, beyond the last data point. Um, so I'll just delete it for now, okay. And in fact, I'm gonna delete this too. Let's see, should I, should I not? As long as I have the borders, I wanna make sure. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna put a couple of, uh, a couple of rulers here, just so that I know where I stand, okay? Um, so I'm just putting, you know, defining. You see, District of Columbia, I'm just gonna get rid of it already, <laughs> right now. Um, and I'm just going to, um, so now I have 22. Now um, you can see for some reason, Oklahoma is actually off of that. So I will actually uh, do a little hack so I can get one extra, one extra line. I'm just making myself a little measuring stick here so that I um, get an extra thing there. I could crop it later if that's too much stuff. Um, so good. So now I actually have the box that will, yeah, let's just say I'm getting rid of District of Columbia. Now, of course, I can't rearrange it now. In this graph, I cannot stretch. I mean, I could, but my ovals would become, I mean, my circles would become ovals. And then I would have to go back in and, you know, and, and basically change everyone. So for right now, if you get rid of Columbia first in the data set, then this will already be more open. Um, okay. So what I wanna do now is I wanna move the names because obviously they're not great the way they are. They're sitting on top of each, of each state, right? So let me just, what I can try to do is try to select them all at once. And to do that, I, so I click on one. Um, and I go, okay, let's say select, and I'm just gonna try same appearance. And it looks like it did it and did not select the circles, which is really great because that's that's what I want. However, it did select some other stuff. So I have to um, deselect that and I'm just gonna be careful. So I do it without reselecting some new things. Usually that's what happens. Okay, that's good. I'm actually going to group them now. Um, I'm gonna group those things, which is nice because now I can 
Let's move the end. You know, I'm just going to take the default. I'm going to put them under the dot by default, and then I will adjust the rest. Um, and because they're grouped, um, yeah, it's easy, it's easier to move, right? So the first thing I'm going to do, sorry, this video now obviously could be, you know, edited and jump ahead, then you can jump ahead if, if you want, but I know you do it anyway, and you probably are already playing me at one and a half speed, but this is a little bit, of course, a drawback of being asynchronous, but it's the way it is. Um, so I'm just, oops, I'm just going to uh, now move individual bits, you know, so if it fits on top, maybe I'll put it on top. If it fits, if it doesn't on top, like here, I'm just maybe put it, you know, on the side like that. Okay, so there is no hard rule as long as it fits. So Pennsylvania, you know, it's kind of, and the type could have been smaller, but right now I wanna see, let's see, that's, so Illinois must be this one. So use your judgment, right? But after a while you, you can see, okay, that makes sense, it's the closest, right? So Maryland, so Georgia must be this one. And Arkansas now it's kind of, I'm stuck with Arkansas. <laughs> um, but one can kind of guess, right? So if this is Georgia, yeah, there's there's not much I can do now. What we can do is perhaps we could do this. And now we, you know, we're getting fancy, but um, So, I'm trying to get a line, but I can't seem to do it. Well, you know what I'm getting at, right? But it's not looking good. So let's see if I can do it different. Oh. It helps to kind of take a deep breath and so now I would need an error, but I don't I don't have the patient now to look for where the error is. So why don't I just do that? Yeah, it's not, it's not the best pointer, but um, but it's something. Okay, so this would be a kind of a not a great fix, but at least we know it's it's somewhere somewhere good, right? So okay, um, so this would be New Jersey, and we're getting there. This would be North Carolina. This would be California, Ohio. Okay, good. Kansas goes here. Massachusetts there. And that's pretty good. Yeah. All right. So this took, you know, I don't know. I lost track, maybe 10 minutes, but at least I have all the states, right? Um, and So I think what I'll simply do now is I'll just, I'll make the dots. Okay, let's see if I can select the dots. So the dots could be, by the way, I'm sorry if you guys are, I mean, you know, this, this, these are probably things you already know how to mess with Illustrator, but um, what I find sometimes with students is that they know the problems, but they don't have like the right strategy about how to, you know, think how to go about uh, doing things. So. I hope this is helpful. Um, if not, just let me let me know. Um, so, okay, what was I gonna do? Yes, I was gonna select all of those. Again, I'm gonna try to, I selected one dot and you may or may not like the circle. You may wanna fill them or just do them 
that none of these are actually overlapping. Sometimes they overlap, in which case maybe opacity would be good. But in this case, they're all separate. So we don't have to worry about that. So if I select same appearance, yeah, okay. I still get this because of the, I think it's because of the border, right? They have, um, oops. They have the same border as these things. And you have to be a little patient because as you see, as soon as you select something or hide something else, you lose something else. Okay, good. So now I'm going to group them. And just in case there's nothing else, I zoom out once in a while to make sure. So I'm going to group those. Um, and, oh crap, I, sorry, I don't want to group them because somehow I selected the, um, okay, that didn't work because it just selected those, the names too. Okay, so let's try it again, select. Same, maybe fill and stroke. I might get lucky there. Okay, still these guys. I think we're gonna get it now somehow. Um, okay, good. Group them now. And now I'm just gonna, yeah. I don't know, just for fun, I'm gonna make the stroke five, exactly five, a little thinner, and the fill. Um, okay. Yeah. So, I guess um, I probably selected a pretty good color that's closer to the others. Okay, so that's good. So now I'm gonna actually use, I'm gonna put a, a grid um, of fill, yeah, background, okay? And I'll do the same as I did before. So first of all, I don't have any, um, any lines here, so I'll have to put those in. So I'm gonna just put a box here that I know it's the border between, let's see, 14, 15, Yeah. Okay, send to back. And we'll do that uh, again, maybe 10% gray just for now. Okay. Uh, we don't want any borders. And now I'll just put some lines and I will use, um, I'll use these guys right here. Sort of my guide. I could have done a step and repeat, but there's so few that. And because now everything, I'm actually going to lock. Um, sorry, I'm going to group my dots with my labels okay I'm making a group of those two together that way i can move around um, because right now i'm going to put the lines um, i'm just going to make one here so that will be a white line no fill and i'm just going to repeat it okay so i just do it like that and then command D on the Mac it just brings it brings it down. And I'm gonna put another one. Notice that I'm not putting any on the uh, edges because you know that's already white, right? That's my oops. Oops, come on. And now I'm going to copy this over. Command D, Command D, and that should be it. Now I'm going to hide the guides. And now they're on top, right? But I don't want them on top of everything else. So what I'm going to do 
You select that. Um, select same. Stroke color. There we go. I'm going to group them. And now I'm going to, I could do a couple of things. I could X them and then paste them, select that and paste them in front. So object, edit, paste in front. And it did it. Okay. So it pasted in front of the, of the screen, of the background, but underneath the other things. And that's it. So I would say now the last thing, these labels are a little big, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess with them. And by the way, in R, they're not 100%. Um, it's just, uh, but you know, whatever we, this, it should be 100%. So I don't know now if I can just select that, but I'll just, I'll just stick to my guns here. So select same. Fill color. Yeah. So all the type is showing up is with this strange, strange whatever, right? I don't like it. So I'm going to make it those all 100% black. They're much cleaner. Um, and here, Minnesota is a little bit out of whack. Oops. So we'll fix that there. Um, okay, so later we can tell the story here, right? We can talk about why Minnesota is down there, why Mississippi is down there, up there, etc. So we could put text, you know, we could put other things, we could make them a different color. Um, right, Mississippi is the worst rate, right? So, you know, we could say, okay, I want to make you know, that guy solid black or something. How about that? We can just make it solid black. We do it. Yeah. Maybe just to call it out, right? Um, but for now, let's just leave it alone. Um, yeah. So now we can just get rid of this because we don't need it. We could almost get rid of the tick marks. In fact, why don't we do that? Um, Yeah, it's a little odd that the chart starts at 14 and 15, but um, if I had been smarter, I would have uh, 14, 15, 20. All oh, right, because it's actually, it's actually quite compressed, right? It's fitting a lot into, um, so my, my lines probably should have been at every, every five. So 15, 20, but then this would have been, yeah. Okay, well, I'm not going to do that now, but that's something to think about, right? That, that perhaps the choice of where you put your grid lines, um, because the numbers are different here, could be a little better. So I'm just going to do this here just real quick to, um, to add what we're missing. Okay, that would be 20, 18, 20, 22, 24, 22. And we're almost done, everyone. Oh, these of course are not good either, right? So this should be, um, like that, and then command D, oops, that doesn't quite work. I have to do it by hand. <clears throat> I mean, you can just skip in the video, you know, if you don't. Um, yeah, it's still a little odd that corner there with 14 and 15 might be a little confusing, but um, but it is what it is now. So we'll, we're just going to live with it for now. I'm trying to think, is it possible that that's 14? I think it is. Um, 
Right, it's 14 going this way, but it's 15 going that way. Yeah, that's just a coordinate, right? Um, all right. Um, okay, and then we would we would change, of course, these labels, right? So for now, let's just keep it simple. We just say white rate. Uh, let's see. We could just say white. And then remember, we don't want we don't want that there. So we're going to duplicate it and bring it up. Now, because it's such small thing, um, we could put black here because there's room, right? But I still don't like that. So I still I still think you know this is the better. Because it's so obvious that we're going to read down, right? I mean, what else could we do? And okay. And then here we might say real quick. Um, Okay, breast cancer rates per 100K um, by state uh, 2017. 2017. So this would be a title, right? So maybe this will make, um, will make bold. If we have a vertical bold, yes, okay. All right, so now we have you know a set of things that are pretty good, um, and we could we you know of course when we put them into a layout we can work more with it. Um, so notice right away that you know the bar chart goes from zero to thirty five. These are the same year, right? Remember, this is the same data. Um, but here it goes from 15, right? In other words, it's cutting off. The scatter plot is actually cutting off the bottom, right? It's just considering the tips, right? So these, all these points you actually find here, they're all very, very crowded, but they're all there, right? It's like taking all the bars and just squishing them. And as it would be all the dots, of course, in different, um, in different spots. Um, because it has to also do the other the other coordinate with the white so um anyway i think for now since this is really just about cleaning up the graphs um uh what you can do for the assignment is um let's see, maybe walk well, if you want to write something um Uh, you could put something in the um, in this spot right here, right? You could, you know, just write something here and tell a story, or you could also move these graphs around, right? Um, so better stop because it really is. Oh, yeah, this is a little messy here. Um, Okay, so that's the assignment for next deadline, which I guess might be maybe Tuesday since we're a little bit late with it. Um, just to get, you know, three graphs that are like your work, you know, it's not just what the program spits out, which again, Tableau is pretty good, Numbers is pretty good, Excel is pretty terrible, um, but you shouldn't, just, you shouldn't just like use those because they're not, and you know, they're never quite right, perfect, okay? So, um, yeah, the other thing, and right now I'm not gonna do this, but eventually, let's see, can we know what type this is? It's about uh, 12 point, 
And this is, yeah, actually, let's do this. This is important. So let's, since the one move, I'm gonna now, uh, I'm not, I'm gonna standardize this type. I cannot do it for the, for these years because they're too small. If I, um, I would have to get rid of half of them, right? To make them so for now, but let me see what I can fix. This is 12, almost 12. So I'm gonna make this 12. And also all of these 12, oops, if I can. <laughs> Not so fast. That's why this command is really useful. Unfortunately, these are all different. Separate. I don't know why that happened. Maybe some programs are better at outputting type. Okay. And now I'm going to also do that here because. Just to be consistent, right? If these were part of actually, what I'll do is I'll um, I'll make the scatter plot a little bigger. Um, okay, scale. Twenty-five, and this time I do want to. No, actually, I still don't want to. Uniform, twenty-five. Okay, now it's gotten a little crowded. Um, I will put it there. Now let's see what happened to my type. Ah, it got close. It's eleven now. So, 12, and I can see also that um, that these other things are not in Vedic, all right? So, what is this Calibri? Yeah. Just lock selection. I'm going to change all of these to Alvedica too. It's an Alvedica light, I would say, right? Yeah. Some things still locked. Okay, I'll lock all. Right. So that's Myriad. Yeah, you can see I've got like so many fonts, right? They all look alike because they're all sans serif, but it's not good to have all these. Um, yeah, it's not good to have all these different fonts. So let me just make that a Vedica too. Um, a Vedica light. Okay. And now I can actually make that type a little bigger because my um, my lighting won't change, right? So I'm gonna make it seven or even, let's see what happens if I make it eight. Yeah, it's not, doesn't look as pretty, but you have to think of all the people like me, right? Who don't see, we're starting to lose their sight. Um, well, okay, let's compromise. Let's make it seven point. Um, and then this too, right? Remember this, we should make a Vedica. Well, 
Or did we make it already? Okay, now I know that's not Helvetica. Okay, why is it telling me it's Helvetica? For some reason it was saying it was. Maybe they're mixed up. Okay, now it says they're Calibri or however you spell it, right? Um, so, Helvetica. Helvetica, by the way, it's a beautiful typeface. Okay. I know it's overused, but. It may not be perfect for the screen, but it's pretty good for print. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So we could be making, you know, editorial choices now about perhaps, okay, this label is too complicated, but um, okay. So I'll leave it at that. And this would be the next, the next assignment. Um, All right, sorry, this took, this took a while, but again, just skip forward if you think you know already what I'm talking about, in which case you don't even have to watch the video. Um, but I wanted the assignment and I'll have links to other um, little, little tutorials that have a few other tricks too, okay? All right, um, see you in the next video. I'm gonna do one that's gonna be analog with paper samples. That's why this one was called screen. The next one is going to be called um, paper. Okay. And then there'll be the actual assignment and I learn. All right. Bye-bye.